Coming up, wireless charging for your Nexus 4, a bunch of iPhone cases. We're going to take a look at the HP Envy X2, a cookbook that's nothing like Grandma's cookbook, and uh, the Kobo Touch. It's all ready. Time to watch before you buy. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Before You Buy is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Before You Buy is brought to you by Shutterstock.com with over 20 million high quality stock photos, illustrations, vectors, and video clips. Shutterstock helps you take your creative projects to the next level. For 30% off your new account, go to Shutterstock.com and use the offer code Before You Buy for and buy audible.com to download the free audiobook of your choice go to audiblepodcast.com slash before you buy and to kick off the new release of dimension of miracles audible is sending a lucky winner to comic-con enter at audible.com slash sweeps chat room don't care Hey, welcome to Before You Buy Twit's product review show in which we get a bunch of wild products in and give our uh, talented staff a chance to look at them, review them, and tell you what they think. We're going to start with Tony Wang. He's our editor-in-chief guy who edits all the videos uh, for the show. He's a big Nexus 4 lover, loves his Android phones, and got a hold of, very rare, the Nexus 4 charger. Let's take a look at his review. I'm Tony Wang for Twit TV, and Before You Buy, and today I'm reviewing the Nexus Charging Orb for the Nexus 4. So what this charging orb is, is basically a wireless charging uh, stand for your Nexus 4 specifically. And as you can see, it says Nexus on there, nice and cool. And um, so I'll just show you right now how it works. All you have to do is take your phone and place it on the stand. And the stand itself actually has a really slippery, uh, rubbery uh, surface. It's a, it's a circular ring. So once you put it on there, uh, with the glass back on the phone, of course, uh, it sticks to the stand, and um, you can see it's charging. And that's pretty much it. The charger comes with a uh, USB cable and a wall plug, just like any other charger would. So the pros and cons of this thing it is very compact, and when you put it on your table, you can actually see, you can actually use your phone and um, use this little phone stand and it charges. And another pro is that you can actually hold your phone with the dock attached and you can still do all your texting and anything that you want to do on your phone while it's charging. And uh, the con of this dock is that it's kind of expensive. It is $59.99 plus shipping and tax. So, and all it does is it gives you a way to charge wirelessly for your Nexus 4. So that might be the con for you uh, is the price. So buy, try, or don't buy, for me, it's a buy. Um, I bought it for my desk at work, and I have no regrets on buying this dock. So if you bought the Nexus 4 for the wireless charging capability, this is definitely the dock that you want to get for your phone. I'm Tony for 2 TV and Before You Buy, and this is Nexus 4 Wireless Charging Orb. Thank you, Tony Wang, editor-in-chief. I, I didn't say and-chief, in-chief <laughs> for uh, the Twit Network. And I understand, chief of editing. Chief of editing. I understand these are a little slower to charge. That would be another negative. Although, you know, nowadays you put the thing on the right. phone and you leave the phone on. But the pro of wireless, no wires. Right. Throw it on there. I got to it. It. say I like that. And it's kind of weird because it feels, we thought we couldn't figure it out. Chad and I were saying, is it magnetic? Is it sticky? It's just because it's a little bit of a suction. Right. It makes a little bit of a seal. So and it the, does kind of hold the, the phone on And the back of the Nexus there. is so smooth. So smooth. It just kind of just keeps sits. it from falling off, which is kind of nice. You need yeah. that, I guess, with something like this. Um, thank you, Tony. Uh, right now, Chad is here. Chad uh, is a producer, Chad Johnson, producer of uh, most of the big shows, Twit, Mac Break Weekly, This Week in Google, but he also has his own show, uh, OMG Craft, which debuted last week it to did. rave reviews. Tonight is our first episode on the Twit Network, so look for it later tonight. So you shot last week. Shot last week. But you're We've now editing. releasing it tonight. Right. Got it. And that's right. how it's going to be. You'll right. shoot on one day, but you'll do shows Tuesday and Thursday re for release. Exactly. Got it. Exactly. Got it. And if you haven't seen it, and maybe you saw some of the live shooting, 
look at the set because you guys did an amazing job. He's actually inside so a Minecraft cool. game. I know it's it really so neat. Cool. So uh, we gave you the iWalk battery dock. This is right. Not a wire. Well, it is a wireless charger, I guess. <laughs> but it's well, little, yeah, there are no wires. There are no with, wires. With this. I mean, I went ahead and recorded a little video uh, reviewing uh, the let's iWalk. Take a so look. Let's take it away. Hello, my name is Chad. I'm with Twit and Before You Buy, reviewing the iWalk 2500 milliamp hour battery. What is this? Well, it's a battery uh, inside of a little case that you could carry around with you, plug into the bottom of your phone, and it would charge your phone from the battery on this device into the battery of the next device. At the top, it has a micro USB plug. This is what you would plug into your phone. That's concealed underneath sort of a hinge locking door, so you have to open up the door to get at uh, that port. On the side, it has another micro USB port, and that is to charge the battery inside of this external device. On the front of the iWalk, there is a blue LED that turns on when uh, it's charging from the iWalk into the device. Then there's also another blue LED along the side that is much smaller and much harder to see, and that turns on when the iWalk itself is charging up. There's no indication on the iWalk on how much it's actually charged, so you just kind of plug it in and wait for a few hours and hope that it's full, then plug it into your device and you don't know if this is at half battery, if once you pull it out, you, you know, you're actually near full because the device didn't take that much power. There's no way to tell uh, with the iWalk how uh, charged the device is. The output of this device is a, an amp, a single amp, which is a little bit more than the typical wall charger that you'll get with a phone that tends to be a, at about half an amp. So uh, you will notice that this device will charge your phone faster than uh, plugging it directly into the wall. Now, pros and cons on the iWalk portable charger. It does have 2,500 milliamp hour battery inside of this, so it will send a normal phone to be completely fully charged. It also will output at a single amp, which is faster than your typical charging time. On the cons, this little external door gets in the way when you try to plug it into the uh, bottom of a phone and then say, try to put it into your pocket. There's this door sort of hanging out. It's also made out of cheap plastic, which has already cracked on me, even though I've been trying to be very, very gentle with the iWalk. Also, because there's no way that the iWalk tells you how fully charged or not fully charged it is, I found that I was just in a guessing game and I really couldn't rely on the iWalk because I didn't know how charged it was uh, if I just had it laying in my backpack. I couldn't remember, did I, did I charge this already? Did I charge my phone and now it's halfway done? No idea, it just has no indication of its charge level. And finally, this is really a non-flexible design. It's because you have the charging port directly at the top. For my phone, it works as a pretty good charger, but I also can't listen to anything through the headphone jack of this phone because the headphone jack is underneath the device. If, let's say, the micro USB was on a wire, I could decide you know, where to plug it in, move the device out of the way. Also, micro USB charging ports on phones are all over devices. Sometimes they're on the side, sometimes they're near the top. Some, I mean, they're all over. So um, because this is really a non-flexible unit and you have to plug this device into your phone, I'd say that's a pretty big con. Many devices this will not work seamlessly with. Finally, this device comes in at around $54.99. You can find uh, different street prices around the internet. Brian tried don't buy for the iWalk charger. I'm gonna have to say don't buy. The reasons are because this is about twice as much as similarly specced chargers. Uh, it's completely unflexible on how you plug it in to your phone and you can get much larger capacities in chargers for the same amount of money. So unfortunately, don't buy for the iWalk. Thanks for watching, I'm Chad Johnson for Twit. Yeah, that's a really common category, right. jam-packed. I don't right. like carrying around a battery. That's why last week when we showed oh, the Mophie case, that's to me, that's the solution. Oh. I wish they'd make a Mophie for... I don't know. I'm actually the opposite. The Nexus 4. I like having an external um, uh, charger because I can throw it in my backpack. It's not always on my device. Right. 
Um, and and also I I tend to be an Android user, so there there aren't really uh, cases made made for these. And and in the chat room, people are going, "Stop calling this a device. Uh, this a device. It's a phone. No, well, it's you, a device. Well, you could you could charge a GPS. You could charge a lot of things off anything. of a uh, yeah you, off of a, anything with a mini, yeah micro mini, USB or micro USB. Yeah, that's the one thing about the Nexus Four I don't like is that it doesn't have a removable battery. I just right. get a bunch of batteries, carry them around. Uh, well, we're gonna take a break. Coming up, Eli Duran Rosen, one of our interns, takes a look at some pretty hardcore cases. For those of you who are really destructive with your phones, I've got one, but we won't review it. I'll, I'll just show you. It's it's my knuck, my knuckle duster, my new iPhone 5 <laughs> brass knuckles case. So don't mess with me, Chad. The pros are you could knock someone yeah. out. Cons? There are no cons. <laughs> yeah, except my buddy Joey. He's a con. But that's another story entirely. We're going to take a break. But uh, right now, I, I want to talk a little bit about Shutterstock.com, our newest advertiser on the show. Shutterstock is the place to find the perfect image or video for your next creative project. Uh, whether a website, a publication, an advertisement, a video, or any other type of project, they have 20 million high-quality stock photos there at Shutterstock. It's really fun. Just put, give me a give me a wild search term. Let's have some fun with this. Um, uh, pink hippos. Pink hippos. No, they'll never have any pink hippos at Shutterstock.com. But it's loaded. Damn. There's more pink hippos than you know what to do with. In fact, they've got a new tool, a color tool. So you could you could have searched for hippos and then chosen hippos in a variety of different colors. See that color picker right there? Isn't that fun? So you can get exactly the right shade of pink. A lot of magazines and publications use Shutterstock because their subscription feature means you can uh, get as many as 50 images a day for one low price. That makes it very easy. Uh, the standard subscription is 25 images a day. Uh, that's enough for most publications, and they're individual image packs, too. Uh, you can download any image in any size, but the point is you pay one price. Royalty-free means you buy the image, you can use it again and again, you pay one price for it. They add 10,000 images every day, so there's always something new on Shutterstock. And, of course, each image is reviewed for content and quality before Shutterstock will add it to the library. Many contributors to Shutterstock are professional photographers and illustrators, and that's why these images are so great. Let's enough with the pink hippos. <laughs> Let's. How about an angry hippo? See if you can find an angry hippo. So you can go by emotions as well. These search tools are fantastic. Drill down by subject, asset type, gender. you got to spell it right. What do you say, cranky hippo? Said, that's his username on Oh, you're cranky hippo. Well, they didn't have cranky hippos, but they do have angry hippos. Create your free account right now, Shutterstock.com. Use our very special before you buy offer code. It's before you buy in the number four for 30% off your new account. Shutterstock.com before you buy and the number is four uh, for the fourth month. And the iPad app, I don't, oh, I gotta get my iPad in here. Have you seen the iPad app? I have. Webby Award it. winning. It is fantastic. Uh, a great way to display images during presentations, search on the go. If you need something for your keynote presentation on your iPad, boom, it's that fast. Boom, boom, boom. Shutterstock.com. Oh, you can, as you're working with somebody, you can uh, create a shareable light box so that you can say, hey, I'm thinking of these images. What do you think? It is a really great tool, and it's a completely global offering, which I really like. A lot of our advertisers, I have to say, U.S. only, not with Shutterstock. They have offices in more than a dozen countries, Germany, China, Italy, Brazil, Belgium, uh, multilingual customer service, dedicated corporate reps, and full-time customer support all week long. you got to try it, Shutterstock.com. Take, this is a good deal, 30% off on new accounts when you use Before You Buy. And the number four. Thank you, Shutterstock, for your support of Before You Buy. Now, I love Eli. He might be our youngest intern. He's, uh, he's in high school. Right. He runs track. He's got a great uh, enthusiasm. And uh, he also may be just a little bit clumsy. That's why we thought. <laughs> he He's kind of the outdoorsy type. Yeah, maybe he ought to take a look at these high-powered cases, these professional protection cases for uh, the iPhone. Eli? Hi, I am Eli Rosen Duran, an intern here at Twit, and today I will be reviewing the Ballistic Everyone series case and the Otterbox Armor series case. Starting off with the Otterbox case, it is hefty and it is waterproof. It can be dropped up to 10 meters and can be submerged in six and a half feet of water for 30 minutes. The phone in here is completely sealed off from dust and any water. You got a couple rubber lashes on top and the bottom to access your jacks. The pros to this case are is extremely tough. It can handle just about anything, including water, drops, and dust. 
and it also protects your screen as a plus. It has a built-in screen protector. Some of the cons to this are it is massive, heavy, and bulky. Can't really fit in your pocket, and it'll be hard to carry around. Another thing is uh, pressing down on the buttons kind of sucks. It hurts your fingers, and you have to put a lot of pressure in it just to use the buttons on either side, on the side and the top power button. Another con to this are the price. For this case, it is $100. But I tried Don't Buy for the OtterBox armor case. I say try it if you're a construction worker or a bomb diffuser. Moving on to the Ballistic Everyone series case, it is very nice and slim, it is drop proof, and you got this nice little kickstand for your media to watch. And it comes with this super cool belt clip if you want to look nice. Taking a closer look, it's got four corners on each edge to easily take it in and out of the case. Unlike the OtterBox case, it is not waterproof, but it is also a lot slimmer than the OtterBox case. The kickstand on this, even though it is really nice to have, it is flimsy and I feel like it could fall off with use. At $50, this might not be worth it, so I would say don't buy. But if you could find it for cheaper and you want a shockproof case, I would say try. I'm Eli with Twit, and I'll see you next time on Before You Buy. I love Eli. He's so great. <laughs> the uh, we dropped this. Uh, it wasn't. I think it was the earlier version of this ballistic case. But you may remember we yeah, it was dropped ballistic our, ran, definitely. Yeah, our iPhones off the roof of the uh, building, uh, which is a forty foot drop, I think, and they fought just survived right. just fine. So uh, these are good cases. They are pricey, but you know you get what you pay for. On the other hand, this uh, this is a brass knuckle case for the iPhone seven ninety five on Amazon. And uh, the case doesn't protect the phone very much, but nobody's going to mess with you. That's yeah, what I think. It protects you. It protects you. That's what you need. Radford, uh, I'm going to go walk over to the uh, other set because Radford's here. He's our newest hire, I think. No, you know what? He isn't. He For one yeah. week, he was our newest hire, and then we hired Patrick Delahanty. Well, Patrick's not here yet, so All right. Radford, All we right. can All right. still He's got still a couple say. of months. Hey, Radford is uh, going to review something we've been very interested in. Let me get up and This is the fun part of the show. Do we have enough cameras to cover the transition? There we go. Watch that. All right. I'm going to get up. I'm going to waddle on over to uh, what we call, euphemistically, the living room set. Radford and Snubs are over there with a couple more products for us. Hi, Shannon. How are you? Our, our producer, Shannon Morrison. Hey, you. Radford. Hey, yo. How are you? Good, and yourself? So you got to uh, play with uh, something that a lot of people, in fact, I got a uh, caller on the radio show asked me about this this week. It's the HP Envy X... Two. This is a Windows 8 yes. Ultra book? Yes, it's a Windows 8 hybrid. And What's that mean? Yeah, I heard that hybrid word. What does that mean? So uh, this is a term that the industry is using a lot now where you have the tablet and a keyboard combined together to make it somewhat like a laptop. So you can detach the tablet and carry yes. it around? It looks like Boy, these. it looks, it's not, is this metal or, yeah, yeah that's it's nice. Brushed, brushed nickel, aluminum? Yeah, yeah aluminum, mm -hmm. but that's yeah, pretty nice. Uh, it's a little bit hard to open up, but. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of <laughs> stiff, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. But uh, for the most part, uh, looking at it, the construction's pretty sturdy. The Here, hold your end good. down. I'm going to tilt it back so yeah. we can see the screen. Here you go, right there. Yeah. There you there you go. Yeah, can you guys see that? Yeah. There you go. It's pretty looking screen. Yeah. It looks pretty good. Um, this is actually not full HD. This is actually 1366 by 768. Oh, I hate, I hate it's that. It's 11.6 in the diameter yeah, of the screen. Yeah. Then, uh, this thing is also not as powered as some of the stuff that you've seen out there, like the Surface Pro, you know, you use the i5 and you had the i7 out there. Right. This one is this actually is a dual core, yeah, a dual yeah. core Atom. Yeah. And that seems to, they go hand in hand, the lower res 1368 screens seem to go with the Atom processors mm -hmm. and the 1080p screens seem to go with the i5 mm -hmm. and i7 processors, yes. yeah. So this one's kind of aimed after the, I could say. It's a low cost. Yeah, a low yeah. cost type of. Yeah. Uh, hybrid, but uh, it has 64 gigabytes of of storage. Solid and you state. Have solid state, and then it's powered by the Intel, you know, graphics chipset. So no Nvidia inside or anything right, like that. Right. Um, and then two gigabytes of RAM. So, so yeah, it's kind of a netbook almost. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of like a netbook. Yeah. Um, but, Is it priced like a netbook? Well, it's. I guess we'll get to that point okay. when we get there. <laughs> but it's. Uh, uh, it runs a couple of things pretty well, which is surprisingly from the dual core, but uh, it's lightweight in terms of how speedy it is, so I'm just going to fire this up. So That uh, feels fine, but you know, every uh, yeah. Windows 8 machine I've seen yeah. it's, scrolls it's just fine. I yeah. think that's Microsoft worked yeah. hard to make that snappy. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. the crazy part is uh, once you start running stuff, like even if you're just running the browser and uh, you, you head back to 1, 000, the desktop, 1, 000. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all right. you head back to the desktop, it's still smooth, but the moment you start running more than one task, 
then you start to see it bog down just a little bit. Only two gigs of RAM. Yeah, and it's even more so when you start running games. Yeah. So, and I'm a huge gamer. Yeah. And I run a ton of games on this. Certainly game. not a gaming machine. No, definitely not. But it, surprisingly, you can run a couple of things, you know, with decent frame rates. So it's not too bad. All right. Yeah. Hey, let me see. Uh, let, let me see it undock. Can ah, you take it apart yeah, for me? Let's take it out right here. Oh, look at that. So, as a tablet, what do you think? I mean, it's fairly lightweight, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's good looking. I love the metal back. Yeah. Um. It's I always find that the 16.9 tablet screen's a little odd. Yeah. Check this out. I have my iPad over here. Look at the comparison. Yeah. Between the two. Look at this. iPad's 4 by 3 yeah. and this is 16 <laughs> by 9. Yeah. It this seems more natural maybe just yeah. cuz we're used to it, right? Yeah. But for watching Netflix or movies or TV shows, I would guess 16 by 9 would be a better choice. You, mm -hmm. you don't have the letter bars, right? Yeah. yeah. And it runs pretty fine so when it's running video on HD in this case 1366. Right. It's well, it's 768, it's, so it's only 720p, yeah. so it's not it's HD, not really HD, yeah. a true HD anyway. Yeah, yeah. And then we also got see, it has a couple HD. of ports in here, so if you check. This oh out. yeah, underneath. So there, I see the docking uh, connectors, but what are what are these three ports here? So this one is actually just to mount it, and this, this is, is the an docking. actual port, and that's so a that's port. a charging port as well as okay. a, a dock for the keyboard itself. Uh huh. And then you have your volume. Right there on your left hand and on your right side, you have... Volume rockers right there. Mm -hmm. And, and you uh, have your power. on-off switch right yes. there. Okay. There is one little thing, though, that you have to check out. It's pretty cool, but somewhat hidden. I'll let you do it's it. It's actually right over here, if you can see that shot. This is a micro SD. Right oh, that's there. nice. So you yeah. can add RAM. It only yeah. has 64 gigs, but yeah. you could put as many as 64 gigs. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, you can't put apps on here, but you can put all like the okay. media and things like that. That's it's great. Kind of scary so it's data, data storage, yeah. yeah. And now I see it has a front and rear camera. Yes. So the the front is actually, they, they call it 1080p HD true view or whatnot, and then you have the rear running at 8 megapixel. Oh, that's and, pretty high end. Yeah. All right. That's pretty decent. I could even show you some pictures later on. Sure. Um, and then on the keyboard itself, uh, you have a couple of ports here. Is there an extra battery in the keyboard? Yes. So that uh, gives you more battery yeah, life. Yeah, it gives you just a little bit more juice. Yeah. So, um, but it's running with the keyboard. It's this thing is incredible battery life. I so. see an HDMI port and a USB port. I yes. see a, a, a sound got, jack. Yeah. Yes, and then yeah. you have uh, over on this side. You have about you have a USB over here. Yeah, and, uh, that, but yeah. and what is that that last one there? Uh, this one uh, is a charging port. Charging port. So that, yeah, it's proprietary it. from HP. Um, but yeah, it's pretty decent in terms of what you're asking for. But if you're trying to do productivity things and stuff like that, it works fine. Running Office and all that stuff and browsing the web. Right. Uh, once you start, I guess, opening more and more browser windows and start running games, and then it starts to get a little and you, crazy. Can you buy it with more RAM, or is that just the no. only? That's yeah, how it comes. That's how it is. There is. They say they have an option, but it's mostly based on the speed of the RAM. I think that that's an Intel thing, isn't it? That they said, yeah. you can use Atom, but you can't put more than two gigs. We don't want to undercut our i5 yeah. sales. Yeah. So what are you loading here, a game? I'm actually loading a game called Guns for Hire, just to give a very general view of how the performance is on this machine. Um, and it is touch, right? Yeah, this one is touch-based. This particular game is touch-based. And we'll just go ahead and just start running out in and wreck the place. <laughs> this is uh, similar to... Oh, well, that, well, that's Steam pretty good. Games. 3D yeah. rendering. Yeah. It's not too bad. This is an Intel, you know, wow. based. Is HG four thousand on the Atom, or is it something different? Uh, I'm not totally sure. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, the, Intel's gotten a lot better with the, what I used to call motherboard graphics. I don't know what you'd call yeah, it this day, but built-in yeah. graphics processing. That's not that's not bad. Now it's a top-down adventure, so yeah. it's not as demanding as a first-person shooter. Yeah, it starts be. to get bogged down once you start putting Does a little it? bit more units into yeah. play. Now HP owns Beats Audio, so how's yes. the audio on this? Uh, the audio is decent, I guess. Coming out of the speakers from the the tablet itself, they're okay, but. I'm, a, I'm an audiophile, so I expect way too much. Yeah. Uh, on the headphones, they're fine, but I, 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 it's a is little it bit... Is it Beats? Is it yeah, heavy, beats heavy audio, bass? Heavy bass, yeah. but of course, you can't really tell you as to have really high-quality headphones. For myself, I have the... Um, actually using the Soul headphones. So you're pretty it. serious or, about yeah, it. Yeah, and it's decent. Yeah. Um, turn it up. Yeah, let's turn it up a little bit. Does it right get here. pretty loud? Yeah, it gets pretty loud. Let's turn that's it up that's important, bit. I guess, if you're going to sit around and watch oh, a movie no, on so it. Oh, no, here comes the bong down. Quick. Oh, you didn't get it in time. There you go. <laughs> it is loud. Tinny, but loud. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Tinny. That's not bad. Yeah. Tinny. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of slow mo parts in this game. Let's see if I could finish this part. But yeah, it's pretty decent. Uh, yeah, I'm, I All suck right. at this. Stop playing the game, Radford. Step away. <laughs>
<laughs> you can tell Trying he's a gamer. To stop. There you go. All right. You put him in front of a video game and yeah, he can't stop, stop playing. That's so great. Here's, <laughs> notice now that it's not as snappy. Yeah. So yeah, this yeah. is stuff that's running in the background. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, you froze it. Yeah, I killed it. That's is what it happens dead? when you have two gigabytes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that's good. That'll do it. Okay, let's. Uh, you ready for the pros and cons? Yes. All right. So on the pros, it has incredible battery life. Uh, good construction. But, like how long? Like 10 hours? Actually, 11 to 12 hours. 11 to 12 yeah, it's hours. That's ridiculously good. That's nice. Yeah. All right. And then you have. Uh, it's beautifully pretty, built. I like yes. the, I like the metal. Yeah, yeah, I like the I like the design. It's a yeah. very solid construction. Mm -hmm. Doesn't get too warped. HP's dumped, or at least on this model, the mirrored lid that they uh, were doing. Yeah. That just was right. a, a magnet for fingerprints. Right. So I like this a little. Bit. <laughs> yeah. So there's a couple things. I have my little cheat sheet over here because sure. I can't seem to remember. Um, it can handle the productivity software pretty well. It runs Netflix. It runs all the videos and whatever. And of course, it's full Windows 8. Right. And on the con side, uh, this thing is also fingerprint mania. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It stutters when running stu stuff in the background, and then the performance obviously is not there. So depending on what you're doing, what kind of apps you're going to want to run, then it may or may not be for you. And then, of course, it's a lower resolution than what you've, you're probably seeing. Yeah, I'm not right crazy now. about, uh, yeah. what is it, 1368 by yeah, 1366 by 768. 1366 by 768. 766 by 768. Yeah. Not crazy about that. Yeah. All right, so, but you got to give us the price now. You were holding out on me. Yes. So the price right now is, uh, well, the price now is 649 The original price was... Is eight forty nine. At eight forty nine, that's way overpriced. Yeah, six forty nine. That might not be so bad. Not so bad with a keyboard yeah. too. So right. You know, there's a lot of tablets that are out there that are just tablets. And that's roughly the cost of the Surface RT, and that's Windows RT, not Windows yeah. 8 Pro. So this is a full version of Windows. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you got to decide: buy, try, don't buy. You know, what? it's a try for me. Yeah. 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 Mostly because I'm a performance guy, but uh, not for you. Yeah. It's not a but buy for, for you, but it might yeah. be for somebody who wants to save money. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Definitely a low end. The HP Envy X Two. Thank you, Radford. Thank you. Radford's our what do we call you? Director of engineering, in mm -hmm. charge of engineering. Mm -hmm. You're the boss. He's the man. He's the guy in charge of engineering. And until uh, Patrick Delahanty gets here, our newest hire at Twit. Nice to have you. We're going to come back in a bit with a look at a tablet for cooking. This ain't your grandpa's cookbook. But first, let's talk a little bit about Audible.com. I'm excited. Audible's got a very exciting new book to offer you. But let me tell you about Audible first. Audible, of course, is that audio bookstore that we talk about all the time, over 100,000 titles, fiction and nonfiction. There's uh, great biographies, history, and then science fiction, mysteries, thrillers. It's all there at Audible. In fact, nowadays, almost every book that comes out, it comes out at Audible at the same time. So you can listen to Sheryl Sandberg's Lean In, for instance, uh, came out at the same time on Audible as it did in the bookstores. That's great because you never get behind. I find that reading in the car at the gym when I'm walking the dog or doing the dishes is a great way to get books, you know, to read books, to learn, to enjoy, to pass the time. Uh, time reading that I didn't have before because I had to hold a book. Um, I spend a lot of time uh, listening to Audible books, and I encourage you to give it a try. We've got a special deal for you. If you go to audiblepodcast.com slash before you buy, you can get your first book free. It's free for 30 days. That's the the gold account. Now, that's the book a month account. So your first book is free. If you cancel the first 30 days, you pay nothing. Uh, the real trick is, what are you going to listen to? And I got a recommendation for you. I mean, there's many choices. But you want to try Dimension. It's called Dimension of Miracles. And the reason I mention this, Neil Gaiman, who is one of my favorite authors, and by the way, anything he wrote is good on Audible, too. All of it's there. But lately, Audible's using him to pick books, kind of a Neil Gaiman selects. And he found this book from... Uh, 1968, I think, called Dimension of Miracles, he says is is exactly uh, what Douglas Adams would have written had he written, uh, you know, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy 30 years earlier or 20 years earlier. He says it's hysterical, it's wonderful, and look who he got to read it. He's wearing a spacesuit. John Hodgman reads Dimension of Miracles by Robert Sheckley, an incredible book. You get that free or any of the other one credit books, which is pretty much all the books at Audible, by going to audiblepodcast.com slash before you buy. And to celebrate the release of Dimension of Miracles, Audible is sending a lucky winner to Comic-Con New York. If you go to audible.com slash sweeps, all you have to do to enter this contest is enter in your email, whether you're a member or not. 
Uh, it, you're going to get round trip tickets to New York City, a hotel for four nights, four nights passes to uh, four days passes to New York Comic Con. It's coming up October 2013. This contest ends April 12th. So you have 10 days to enter. I don't see any reason why not just go there right now. Audible.com slash sweeps. Put in your email address. And while you're there, why don't you sign up for Audible and get that Dimension of Miracles so you can listen to it. I think you're going to love it. And, of course, once you listen to that, then you get hooked and you listen to more and more and more. And you're pretty soon you're an Audible fanatic just like I am and have been for 13 years. I joined Audible in the year 2000. I've read over 500 books, and I just love it. Audiblepodcast.com slash before you buy to get your free book. Audible.com slash sweeps to get in the drawing for a trip for two to New York Comic Con in October. Sarah Lane took a look. We thought, who better to review this? This is the strangest thing. What, it's a tablet called The Cook, Q-O-O-K. And since Sarah's quite the cook, we thought we'd give her a chance to take a look. Sarah? Hey, everybody. Sarah Lane from Twit here. And I've been tasked with playing around with a kitchen tablet. Now, normally, I would say, awesome. It's a match made in heaven. I love tablets. And I love to cook, and I've always, always got my iPad in the kitchen. I have a million apps downloaded on my iPad. But of course, an iPad is a tool for all sorts of things, not just people who are interested in recipes. So I was very interested to try out this tablet. Haven't said the name of it yet. Are you ready? It's called Cook with a Q-O-O-Q. -O -O -Q. Get it? Cook. Anyway, all right, so this guy is $400. You might say right off the bat, oh, OK, that's not super cheap, and I would agree with you. You've got a little stand here, which, ha which works in uh, landscape mode here, or if you want to look at your tablet in portrait mode as well. Portrait mode uh, doesn't make a whole lot of sense, at least uh, in my experience, because the screen's not rotating. So I don't know what that's for. Maybe they don't want me to put it in portrait mode. It does feel solid. Um, it's designed to be spill-proof, again, because when you're in a kitchen, uh, the company says, yeah, you know, the kitchen, everything's going to get banged up, and we want sort of a rough-and-tough cooking tablet. Well, we've also got an Ethernet port here. Um, we have got a USB port, and we also have a card reader port, as well as headphones. This little guy is designed to cover up this area. Of course, you're going to be in the kitchen with all the stuff splashing around, right? So it's nice to be able to cover these ports if I'm not using them. But this is such a pain in the butt to get on and off because there are these there are these little little guys that have to go into these very small ports and not fun. Did the whole I just I don't like this, okay? Screw it. That's all fine and good. What about the software though, right? What what's what's this going to give me that I can't get on my iPad, which I works really well for cooking. So you've got your home area. I went ahead and signed up for an account. It's a little unclear what I'm really getting, but if I go ahead and look in my recipes area, I can look through new recipes. Um, I can look through, uh, by dish type. You know, if I'm in the mood for something that has cilantro in it, type of a thing, I can look by ingredients. If I'm, you know, interested in some sort of an entree and maybe I need a little bit of help, I can go ahead and get to a point where I go zucchini and pine nut crumble. That sounds good. I would like to view it over in the actual recipe area. We've got briefly what the dish is all about. Then you have a preparation tab, which tells you how to make it. Then you have your ingredients tab. Now, assuming that you're going to read left to right in the tabs, it should be the other way around, right? I need to figure out what ingredients I need to assemble, and then I need to go into preparation. So uh, what is nice is that it does have a utensils area, so I can go ahead and say, these are all the utensils that I need. Can I even, is this even something that I can create with the stuff that I've got in my own kitchen? So. In general, a couple little things, but it seems to work out pretty well. Now, here's another interesting thing. This says two credits for this recipe up in the upper right-hand corner. So when you sign up for an account, which I did, it gave me 100 credits. This is two credits. So it's going to take me a long time to run out of credits. But at that point, I'm expected to pay either a flat fee or a monthly subscription to have access to more recipes. That's already very strange to me. I have, again, iPad apps. Um, How to Cook Everything is one that comes to mind that is really, really fully featured. They have new updated recipes all the time. The catalog is really big. And it was a $10 flat app fee. 
it seems like the recipes themselves are good. They've got different levels. If I'm sort of like, I don't know what I'm doing, please just give me a recipe that somebody without any uh, onion cutting skills can do with flying colors. And then they have more detailed stuff. But it's set up a little strange. The software I find a little bit laggy. Um, it's certainly not a retina display or anything close to it. So you notice that right away. And it's expensive. It's expensive for what you're getting, especially since, you know, I mentioned my iPad just because this is the tablet that I use, but all of the different tablets that are out there on the market. I think you probably get where I'm going with, with, with the Cook tablet, don't you? The Cook is, for me, it's a don't buy. Uh, $400 is too much for something that isn't sort of all-inclusive, where you're expected to pay more afterwards. I think that the design is nice, but it's not anything that's gonna wow you, like, ooh, it's so thin, ooh, it'll just slip under, you know, something under your counter and, 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 and be invisible. Kind of takes up a lot of space, and the software itself is just a little bit strange. I don't think that we don't need uh, tablets in the kitchen. I think we absolutely do. I just don't know that something that's only devoted to cooking is the best use of your money. So that's all from me. I'm Sarah Lane for Before You Buy, and um, happy cooking out there, everybody. Yeah, what Sarah didn't mention is that it has about the worst screen I've ever seen. It's obviously a very inexpensive Android uh, tablet, which has been heavily customized. You can't, as far as I can tell, get down to the Android ear, so you can't even use it as an Android tablet. For 200 bucks, you could get a Nexus 7, put some recipe software on here, and you'd be set. The, you, really, what they should have done is just made a case that looks like this and sold it for the Nexus or the iPad and uh, have done with it. Yeah, I have to agree with Sarah, even after just looking at this, and I love to cook, too. This is uh, definitely a don't buy on the cook. Ugh. Good name, though. Mm. Q-O-O-K. Now, let's say hello to uh, Shannon Morse. Hello. Snubs, who uh, produces this show and is working on some new shows for Twip, which we'll talk about later. Yeah. But, uh, so you tried to palm minutes. this off on me. <laughs> she said, Leo, would you like to review the Kobo next week? I said, yeah. nah, really. <laughs> The, Co the Kobo is a kind of a left field tablet. You've got the Kindle. Yeah. You've got the Nook from Barnes and Noble. Those are two big booksellers. Yeah. Kobo is kind of the third yeah. flavor. So Kobo is like the little guy that nobody ever hears about. So, but I'm totally supporting like you know the yeah. Let's support the them if they're good. Absolutely. And they do have some really great products that I've found. Uh, we reviewed the Kobo Glow. That was so little. The Glow, yeah. which um, actually glows, it has a back. Right. So it's kind of like the uh, paper white. Right. And we also reviewed the Kobo Mini. That was the little one. Yeah. Which is the teeny tiny. That one that week. can fit in your back pocket. Mm -hmm. I really like that one. And it's under 100 bucks. And then we have this one, which is called the Kobo Touch. And it's very similar to yeah, the hold it right here. Uh, I'll hold Kindle it. version. Yeah, it looks like a Kindle Touch. Very lightweight. It does. It's very similar. Same kind of e-ink screen, yes. right? Yeah. Um, so what do you think? So um, let me just discuss a little bit of the specs of this guy. Uh, this one is six inch, just like the Kobo Glow. Uh, the difference between the two is, of course, this one's touch screen and it does not have the glowing backlight right. on it. So it's just your regular, it's very, very simplistic. But basically. it's direct light, it's just yeah. as readable. I mean, it's yeah, really exactly. good. Yeah, exactly. So it, if you're requiring something that's simplistic, that just gets to the point, is just an e-ink mm -hmm. e reader, this would be a really, really good. Uh, it does have a quilted purchase. back. I like the quilted back. It gives it kind of a nice uh, quality <laughs> a nice design feel. feature. And it yeah. comes in a bunch of different colors, too. You can get black, white, blue, a uh, pretty lilac color for the girls, and silver as well. Um, it's a little bit pricey. It's 130 bucks. Mm -hmm. um, I would aim closer to $100 for this this version of a e-reader. Um, and it also does tap and swipe gestures whenever you're reading your book. So if you're more of a swiper like I am, then you don't have to worry about that. Oh, I could that. swipe yeah, through the you pages. Can do both. Oh, that's cool. And then this it has little a button physical is a home button, which yeah. is kind of nice. That is nice. You don't see that very often. That's good. Yeah. So if you go back there, you can see there's a settings button up mm -hmm. here. There's not a whole lot to it. Uh, you can also get to the bookstore and the uh, reading guide. It was kind of interesting with this, uh, the fact that on the home screen they have a couple of your books, and then at the top is this huge link for the bookstore. They're like really saying, hey, you want to buy more books, go to our Kobo store, buy, mm -hmm. buy more things. Um, so it kind of stands out. The internal storage on this is about two gigs, so it's going to fit you several hundred books. Yeah. And then 32 gig micro SD card can also uh, be added onto the bottom of it. It has a little micro SD slot uh, right, right there. there. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, so you can fit several thousand books if you include a micro SD card. The battery life is great on this. I love it. It didn't take any time to charge, maybe a couple hours, and then you it lasts you for a good month. Mm -hmm. So no problems with that. It's very normal with the e-ink uh, books that you can find on the market. And it does wireless syncing with Kobo as well. So you now, can download software and just sync up to the cloud for all your books. Do I have to buy books from Kobo, you the don't. Kobo store? It will take all sorts of different file formats. Uh, you can do images on here, like JPEG and whatnot. You can also do PDFs, uh, Mobi, and EPUB as well. So any kind of those kind of books you can put onto a micro SD card and read on that. And it's Wi-Fi only. Wi-Fi only, yes. Mm -hmm. There's I no see extra all the Wi-Fi. Uh, and of course, it does have a charging port on the bottom, yeah. so you can plug it in. Um, hey, let me in, uh, enter in our password here. Don't sh don't show that. <laughs> So the box doesn't include very much when you open it up. Uh, it just has the Kobo itself, a quick start guide, and the charger, of course. And um, I like the fact that they do include uh, compatibility for comic books on here as well. Oh. And I looked through their store to find a couple of comic books that I'm familiar with, and they had all of the ones that I looked oh, that's for. Neat. So, like, Walking Dead is available on their store. But it's store. black and white, remember. Yes, it's not going to be color. Yes, it's all black and white, so yeah. you're not going to get color comics on here. Mm -hmm. But you can zoom in, which is really nice as well. Uh, that's not something that you, you Is it a pinch get. zoom or is there a tap? You can tap in the center and then you get all these options uh, down at the bottom. Let's see. And you can change the text quality, how big it is. You can also change the uh, actual fonts if you want to, which is interesting, as well as uh, different things like spacing, line spacing, and the margins. So you have a lot of customization options just in case, you know, you can't see as well or you're a little bit older and you need larger fonts. So I'm going to use nice open dyslexic, that. apparently, open for, dyslexic. for folks who are dyslexic. See, that seems harder to read. But that does. Maybe for it's dyslectic, easy for maybe it dyslexic, maybe it is. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So all in all, it's really, really nice. Um, I would say the pricing should go down just a little bit on this uh, this product. My pros for this are the design. I really like the design. I like the back, the quilted back. I think that's very nice. Um, it's pretty responsive. There were a couple of times when I found it to be a little slower. I had to tap twice on the menu to get it to come up. Uh, just a couple of small things, but it wasn't to the point where it was super annoying for me. And it's simplicity. I like a simple ebook reader. That's what I want. I don't want to read books on my iPad. I don't want to read them on my phone. I want to read them on an ebook reader because I like e ink. Mm -hmm. I don't like backlit screens. Like, mm -hmm. no, not for books. Drives me crazy. It gives me a headache. <laughs> and then the cons are the price. I think that should come down a little bit. So, 129, you said? Yeah, 129. Yeah. Yeah. So, I would give it a try. I would definitely um, try it out, see if you like their library. Everything that I searched for, I could find in their library, so it's definitely growing. Um, of course, it's not as big as Amazon's market right now, but it's a possibility, so it might be the one for you. That's, this is the Kobo... Kobo Touch. Touch. Yeah. And it's pretty much the equivalent of the Amazon Kindle Touch. Pretty much, yeah. With a different bookstore yes. attached, basically. Yeah. That's the difference, yeah. Thank you, Shannon Morse. Thank you. Snubs. We appreciate it. Thank you all for being here. And boy, thanks to our reviewers, Tony Wang and Chad Johnson and Eli Duran Rosen and Radford. What's your last name? Gom Castro. Castro. <laughs> I don't know why I can't remember that. Radford Castro. I will next time. Sarah Lane. I didn't mention the host of iPad today. That kind of that, she's not biased, and uh, <laughs> not at all. Not at all. Uh, yeah, she was right about this. This is terrible. And uh, Shannon Morse, uh, who is our producer, thank you for joining us. You can email Shannon and make your suggestions or requests for things you'd like us to review. Byb at twit.tv. You can also uh, watch these shows on YouTube. YouTube.com/slash before you buy, or of course, uh, on-demand audio and video at twit.tv/slash byb. Or subscribe. That's probably the best way. Then you never miss an episode. We're on iTunes and everywhere else you can find podcasts. Thanks for joining us. Remember, you got to watch before you buy. We'll see you next time.